What is up, bros? With Josh here. In today's video, we're going over the currently work in progress tier 10 Italian destroyer. Yes, it looks like a cruiser, I know, but it is a destroyer and is the Apollo Emilio. Now, this ship still is currently work in progress. Her stats are subject to change and could change before it officially goes live. In this version, though, we are actually going to get to see the new SAP ammo as well. And my god, is that nasty this new ammo destroyer versus destroyer this is going to be pretty crazy let's dive into the stats of the ship itself with a 28,200. now there are a couple of these values that will be affected um i have survivability expert and bft so to keep those in mind um hp though 28,200. pretty freaking large uh hp pool for the ship but you're kind of going to need it for the style of play this ship has Artillery 4x2, 135 millimeter, so kind of an interesting caliber of shell right there. But since you're going to be shooting the uh, the SAP ammo, you're not going to need inertia fuse, so it opens up for a lot of different captain builds. But with the BFT as well as the reload module, we are at a 5.5 second reload, so pretty decent. And again, you're shooting out 8 uh, in the salvo, so you're going to do a lot of damage there. And then a base range of 13.8, that's not an uh, AFT, and that is without the range module, that's just the base range. However, as you see right here they are very very lofty <laughs> so it is going to take a while also you have the new incoming tracers um, which takes a little while to get used to but these are pretty freaking lofty shells this is actually the first game we played in it we kept playing it after a while but this game actually shows a good mix of what the ship can do but yes very lofty on the shell SAP maximum maximum shell damage of 3,250, which is pretty large. And look at that SAP uh, shell uh, armor pen of 37 millimeters. That's pretty freaking high. Also, you can see we're dumping out torps upon torps upon torps. It's because the Italian flavor is long range, slow, but very fast reload. Basically, these are Duca di Osta torps. 12 kilometers though, we do get a couple torp hits this game, but what it is is you kind of have the one middle one, kind of like the Mahan, several ships in this game have now, and you're able to just kind of dump them pretty quick and uh, able to do some damage with 12 kilometers, but very, very slow, as a lot of people like to call them, sea mines. Uh, AA defense is okay, you're not going to be shooting on a ton of planes, um, so not really worth specking into any kind of... Uh, AA build or anything like that. Also, maneuverability. The ship is extremely fast. Um, as you see, we're getting well over 40 knots. Base 30, 43.5 with the speed boost as well. And the detection this is as low as it can get, 7.1. So you're going to be kind of this gunboat-esque uh, play style. You'll see what we can do. Also, since you don't need demo expert, you don't need inertia fuse, you don't need a couple of those skills since it's the SAP you kind of have the freedom, as you see right here. I have a high level or high detection captain. I actually have uh, radio location, which I kind of like. I really do like radio location on this build because things out detect you and you can then charge in because you're faster than almost everything. So uh, the main thing is people are asking what type of play style this ship gives. And I would say it's more towards the Russian gunboat line, um, but it offers the ability to with the type of smoke, as you see, this ship brings a bunch of new things into the game. The new uh, exhaust smoke, which basically forms an entire um, an entire smoke around your ship, and you're able to just kind of keep moving as you're. And you'll see what we can do against a destroyer. Um, yeah, it, this the new smoke is pretty freaking scary, um, but uh, offers the new smoke as well as the new ammo type. And so, first of all, my first impressions of the ship is it's pretty good, and the SAP is pretty. Nice gnarly and you'll see kind of uh we'll start off slow in this game trying to figure out what to aim what to do and what position to get in because you're kind of limited on how much you can kind of play but um as the play style though it's kind of this mix of a russian gunboat uh french destroyer it's kind of in that same realm um, of a ship, but uh, with your one smoke, you're able to kind of get into some positions. You can kind of push aggressively as well, um, as well as the 135s is pretty uh, pretty good when it comes to pumping out damage on cruisers. That seems to be the main competitor for this, or the main target is cruisers and destroyers. Battleships, we seem to do a little bit of damage. Obviously, with battleships, you want to do a bunch of uh, fires, you want to burn through them, uh, but SAP doesn't really offer that since you have a 0% fire chance, but 
as you just saw right there, we just did a 6K salvo. And yes, we got to zoom out a little bit farther for the Bismarck because at 12 kilometers, we have almost a 12 second lead time. So 13 second, 14 second. So yeah, it's uh, it's a little intense uh, trying to hit things at range. So definitely don't need like range module or anything like that. This is going to handle you just fine. But we're going to kind of get into a spot here. We're going to push in and still trying to figure out open water, using your Wazda, propulsion, all things like that. Um, you're definitely going to need to use that and abuse that to really make this thing kind of work. And um, still, the, my biggest downside is, is the arcs on this thing. But you're going to see me go against this destroyer and think, okay, that's why they need uh, that type of... of, of trajectory on those shells if they were lower this thing would be totally broken and it's already pretty freaking crazy um how much damage these shells can do when it comes to uh dd versus dd combat and trust me this little gearing is going to feel the full wrath of the paulo emilio um i like this play style though uh it's kind of this weird in between but it offers a bunch of unique things that we haven't really seen i like being able to just dump a ton of torps um, yet they're not super scary. They have a pretty low damage, about 13,000, 13 and some change. Um, but you just throwing them out for basically aerial denial and uh, being able to push in when needed. But you still kind of don't take the role of a capital destroyer. And what I mean by that is other DDs like the gearing that we're going against in this area. The gearing, um, you know, any of the, the daring and stuff like that. As you see, we do have the, uh, we are popping our smoke. This is not really how you would use it, but it is still usable um, for pumping out damage. And if we can get some salvos on this, I know we will see him in just a bit. And he will see how much damage we can do to a destroyer. That's the, this video isn't the, the highest damage I've done, but it shows how absolutely insane this SAP is for DD to DD combat. Um, it is freaking next level how much damage you could do on a salvo. And it definitely will be tweaked. Again, this is work in progress. I was going to do a bit more of an in-depth uh, kind of dive on this ship, but I feel like it's still so early, not only in this ammo type, um, but in ships that are going to be using this ammo type. So I feel like we'll see some changes. Um, and once we get into this fight with this gearing here, you'll see the reason why. Uh, I don't want to spend, I guess, too much time in the current phase of the ship because... Um, we're going to definitely see some changes before this thing does go live or does get into people's hands. It is, though, uh, Elephant in the Room. Not sure how this ship will be available. That's one of the main things that's always asked about. And again, kind of holding off. But still, just kind of throwing some shells out there. And one thing I kind of made a joke about is the ribbon types are kind of lonely, I guess. You kind of get spotted and you, you get shell hits and you know how you're used to getting you know, a, a few things. And here we go. Here's the salvo on the gearing. Now, this is a perfect example of what you do with this 4K. Just absolutely chunks the gearing and he's stuck 5k he we're basically gonna three salvo this gearing in a way almost 6,000 damage that is four we would have four salvoed that gearing that is insane that is so crazy and trust me it's not the only destroyer we get this game so down goes the Kremlin as well with those fast torps but what a 4k salvo like a 6k a 5k that could be a bit of a problem i could see yeah maybe maybe a little bit of a problem when it comes to dd versus dd uh yeah I, that blew my mind and obviously we just ramped up to almost 75k and we're starting to get this ship back i do like that the ship offers some nice speed we've seen a few of those ships and um the one thing i do like too is that this ship does offer obviously some great damage potential when it comes to that but it doesn't promote staying at a long range because your shells have such a floaty arc um so this is kind of like a weird in between when it comes to uh like the, the long range damage farmer that we see like with the Kaba or a Tashkent or an Udaloy. Those ones are more annoying or even the French destroyers. They're pretty accurate at long range. Now these are really accurate, but it's, it, they're so floaty on that shell that if you're getting outside 12 kilometers, I wouldn't say it's impossible to hit those, but it definitely isn't uh, really reliable, if you will, to hit those. And um, really, we were able to pump in some salvos in a different game on a on a uh, on a Des Moines, and the Des Moines took almost a seven thousand salvo uh, when it came to this. That Donskoy taking almost a seven k salvo with this SAP. This stuff is absolutely gnarly. Um, 
so much damage every five and a half seconds. I don't have adrenaline rush on this captain, so we could actually got it a little bit lower. Um, but 4k, 5k, you get so much damage with this, and it's not like almost a six, another is almost a 6k salvo. Uh, it's it's pretty crazy, and it, it just kind of blows your mind because it doesn't really make sense about like what's kind of like well, how am I doing this damage? And it's just you're getting those full pens. It's a, when you look at your type of shell hits. It's really just, it's a battleship's wet dream because you're just, you're always getting full pens. There's no over pens, there's any of this. It's just kind of this guaranteed damage in a way. So, um, but you're also going to see me shoot against some destroyers and some battleships. And here we see another, uh, uh, this gearing right here. And this is what I'm trying to, and Country Grammar, was, Country Gamer was uh, watching the stream. So we play all these live on Twitch.tv. So you guys can always come and hang out and have some fun. Um, but this is what the new type of smoke is. So as we've seen, there's basically like three types of smokes um, in this game right now. We have the normal smoke, which is you lay it down. It's down for uh, it disperses for a short amount of time, and then it sits there for a long time. We see those mostly with the ships like the USN destroyers, German destroyers, IJN destroyers. Then we have the very short uh, uh, duration smoke, which we see kind of on the Pan Asian, as well as the uh, Royal Navy, um, where it's uh, down for a little. It disperses for a little bit, then down for a little bit, then it moves. We have smokes like the crawling smoke, which is something that. Uh, um, Crawling smoke, uh, which is kind of like the Perth, where it kind of keeps rolling, or the, they call it the crawling, I call it rolling smoke. But this is the exhaust smoke. So as you see, I am not detected. And what it does is it basically makes an entire kind of sphere around you. And yes, this poor little gearing can't do anything. This stuff is so good, and he was a target acquisition gearing. So, yeah. Yeah. This thing could be so dangerous. It has a high detection, 7.1, but using radio location with the speed and then using this, this smoke where you turn into a ghost that just haunts the dreams of a destroyer that can't run away. My God, this DD, I'm a, I'm a DD player. And this thing, I've played it and it gives me nightmares where you can three, four salvo destroyers, and you can't really, all you need to do is just get them to shoot. That's all I need to do. Then they're spotted, you smoke, you're smoking an invisible at, at 40 plus knots. Oh man. So again, I was gonna do a bit more of an in-depth look at this ship. Um, I think we'll probably see some changes, but at least it brings something super, super unique to the DD playstyle. Um, at least props to Wargaming for thinking of something interesting, but holy shit, the damage you can do with these shells, especially against destroyers, absolutely nutty. So that was, again, we played that ship a lot. It's a lot of fun to play. I love that. I love its play style. It's different. I love that there's a trade-off between being this absolute monster, but you trade off floaty arcs into high detection. That's really, really cool. Um, but we're probably going to see some tweaks to not only this ammo type, but also this destroyer. And uh, we will probably see a couple versions, honestly, uh, before this eventually goes live. But anyways, I wanted, wanted to show you guys a, a quick little preview of this DD, the Apollo Emilio, the Tier 10 Italian destroyer. Uh, I, this thing is going to be a monster to deal with. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.